Go. So, I'm here on a Friday night making an announcement that Pastor's books came in, okay? I'm holding in my hand, I think, five copies. I had to stop and count for a second. Soft cover copies. But he also is um, receiving hardcover copies. So some of you guys have purchased his book. We want to say thank you. But we're going to have a book signing event. So before anyone goes and purchases any more books, please just hold it for a few minutes and wait until we make the announcement of the book signing event. So Pastor is going to have his soft cover books and his hardcover books for sale, and he will open it up and personalize it for you if you just hold on and wait for the date, okay? We will be making an announcement soon, probably through his Facebook and through House of God and Gate of Heaven Church to let you know when and where the book signing will be, okay? So please, just wait. I know that some of you guys have purchased it, but for those of you who have not, they are here. But and, they, they could buy them now, And too. you're going to buy them on the day. But you could buy them now if they want. And you can still buy them from here now. He yeah. wants me to let you know. Yeah. He's not even going to wait for the book signing. Yeah, no, For no. those of you, I feel like doing an infomercial. For the first 10 people that get in touch with him, <laughs> <laughs> he will sign the book special for you. Okay, so that's the great announcement. We just want to say congratulations to Pastor and praise the Lord because it's been about a year-long journey and I'm super excited for him. So, so just continue to pray now that the book is out. Just um, continue to pray that the book ends up in the right hands for the right people. You know, he wants it to go into the um, prison ministries and, and for anyone that, anyone that needs the Lord. So please pray for that. Amen. Amen. With that said, we're going to go straight into the message, okay? So, I know that everyone right now, my message is going to be kind of short, but I pray and encourage you one that will uplift you and build you up. Because right now, there are people in a panic. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting like Facebook Messenger messages and text messages and everything about the coronavirus, right? Everyone is on high alert for the coronavirus. Now, I'm just going to make a preface, a little statement here. I'm not saying that we don't um, take precautions. You know, you need to wash your hands. You do need to do that. Cover your face when you sneeze. You know, when you go to the store, you know, nobody likes to be in line with someone who just blasts a sneeze in front of everybody. So we do need to cover our face. And there are measures that we need to take, right? But the reason I want to um, bring a message tonight about what we're going to talk about in just a minute is because as believers, we don't have to walk around being afraid. Heck no. I do not have to be paranoid and run out and buy the little face mask to wear because of a coronavirus. Because before that, what was it, the bird flu? And before that was, you know, who knows all of these, you know, things that are been going on. I even remember back, remember when people were sending the powder and the envelopes. And there's always going to be something for everyone to be concerned about. Now again, I'm not saying that you just be ignorant and, and go eat and drink after people wherever that you go. We have to use some common sense because you know there are germs, wash your hands, do, do your necessary precautions. But we don't need as believers to go hiding and be panicking and, and tell everybody, you know, buy the mask to cover your face and, and pull your kids out of school, no. And I'm gonna tell you why we don't. As believers, we do not have to do that. God has promises in his words. Uh, Matthew 24, 35 says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. Now, they are not just words, okay? They're not just black and white uh, things on a piece of paper for you to just read and, and set it aside. There's power in God's word. And God's word tells us that we do not have to fear those things. The first scripture I'm going to bring to us that talks about why we don't have to be afraid of the coronavirus or anything else that's you know being released by the hand of the enemy into the world, we're gonna read Psalm 91. I'm gonna read the whole thing, but we're gonna focus on a couple scriptures. Psalm 91 says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Sure, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. 
His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the um, darkness, or the plague that destroys the midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, if you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, then no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him with my salvation. So, does that sound like something that means you and I need to walk around in fear of what is going on? No, it doesn't. I mean, we're going to hear about plagues and wars and and then you know there were locusts all of these things are very real i'm not saying that we have to put our head you know in the sand like an ostrich and pretend like nothing is going on no things are going to happen i just read to you that you said you're going to see things happen on your side on your you know, your left and your right you're going to be witnessing the things like that but it doesn't have to come near our tent okay your tent can be this body right here it can also be your house now, a lot of us here, when the hurricanes are coming through, we signed Psalm 91 and it, all around us. We said nothing is going to happen. Everyone took home the paper. I still have mine uh, up in my house. Pastor still has his. And what happened? Nothing happened to our stuff. Nothing happened. Yeah, you're still doing it. Yeah, we just have to continue to believe it. <laughs> That's right. Nothing's going to happen. But the thing is, is that if we're believers, we're supposed to believe this. It's not just supposed to be something that sounds nice, okay? It's supposed to be God's word that will endure forever, that we hold on to and we believe. Yeah. Now, if you see this next to you, you know, what are you going to say? Are you going to start to panic and say, oh my gosh, Lord, it's in Miami. Ah, and you're going to freak out and buy all the lies, all and stuff that they're promoting now? No, you continue to stand and say, I don't care where it is. It's not coming near my house. Whether it's destruction like a hurricane or it's sickness, you know, plague, uh, pestilence, whatever it is, you know, termites, I don't care what it is. It does not come near your tent. And that's what we have to hold on to and we have to declare it. Part of Psalm 91 said that I want us to go back over. He says in verse 2, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress. And it goes on. So in other words, you have to say it. I have to say it. But not just to say it by memory or not just to say it by rote, which is when you just say something over and over. You know, the Bible says that there's a, um, a connection between our mouth and our heart. So we believe it in our heart and then we say it with our mouth, just like salvation. So if I believe that God is my Savior, I'm going to be saying God is my Savior. Jesus is my Savior. But likewise, like Psalm 91 I need to believe that he's the protector of my house, the protector of my car, the protector of my family, the protector of my body, my lungs, whatever it is. We have to believe it and then proclaim it and declare it. Just like in the middle of the hurricane, those that, that um, know us well knew that some of us were screaming in the middle of the hurricane when the lights started to blink, it is not going to go out. You know, so maybe you might have to do that. You might just say, I told you, devil, you're not coming near my house. I am not going to get sick. You know, what happens if you wake up one day with the sniffles? Where I'm from, sometimes the people say, I'm trying to catch a cold. Where I'm from, that's what they say. Or I'm trying to catch the flu. I'm not trying to catch anything. <laughs> Nobody needs to say that. I feel like I'm coming down with or whatever people's slang is. You know, you don't say, I'm starting to feel like I'm catching the flu. Heck no. That's when you start to say, you know what? No weapon from against me will prosper. I'm not going to get sick. Find someone to agree with you because that's what I do. As soon as I feel something, I run to my best friend and I say, you know what? I feel this is, but you know what? I'm not having it that way. I'm not going to receive it. So that's how we have to stand on the word, whether it's a coronavirus 
or anything else that is threatening to come and bother you, your body, your family, or your house. I think that, that needed an amen right there. So amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> let, me, let, let me just pray. High five. High five. Because I'm not going to take it. Okay? Let me give it to you in another translation. This is God's words translation. Whoever lives under the shelter of the Most High will remain in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, again, I will say to the Lord, you're my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Okay? So if we're trusting him, that means we trust him. Even if your knees shake a little bit, because the great thing about walking with God is that you're going to come across maybe a trial that you yourself haven't overcome before. But if you look back and you see that he has been faithful in the past, your knees might shake a little bit at whatever you're going through now. But just know that you just know that he's faithful. Okay? Amen. So you just declare, I trust you, Lord. Because of everything behind me that I've gone through and you brought me through, I trust you for whatever I'm facing now. Amen. Okay? He is the one who will rescue you from the hunter's trap and the deadly plagues. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will find refuge. His truth is your shield and your armor. You don't need to fear the terrors of the night, arrows that fly during the day, plagues that roam the dark, epidemics that strike at noon. This is covering everything, okay? I know I mentioned the coronavirus, but this is, you know, this is all encompassing, okay? They will not come near you, even though a thousand may fall dead beside you or 10,000 at your right. They will not come near you. You only have to look with your eyes to see the punishment of wicked people. You, O oh Lord, are my refuge. You have made the Most High your home. No harm will come to you. No sickness will come near your house. He will put his angels in charge of you to protect you in all of your ways. They will carry you in their hands so that you will never hit your foot against a rock. You will step on lions and cobras. You will trample young lions and snakes. Because you love me, I will rescue you. I will protect you because you know my name, says the Lord. And when you call to me, I will answer you. I will be with you when you are in trouble, and I will save and honor you. I will satisfy you with a long life, and I will show you how I will save you. Now, doesn't that sound like something that we all need right now? Regardless of what is going on in the world, you know, um, family members could be sick or going through a hard time. Whatever it is, Psalm 91 encompasses everything. Amen. Even though I'm specific, specifically talking about, you know, sickness, uh, disease, things that want to come and threaten you and make you afraid. You know, people hear the word cancer and they automatically start freaking out like, oh my gosh, or... You know, something happens in your body, you, your body twitch the wrong way, and, you, and the enemy can throw something to your brain. Oh, you're going to die of this. Heck no. That's not what Psalm 91 tells me. So I want to continue to encourage us here tonight that the stuff that's happening in the world doesn't have to come near us. 1 Kings 8.37 says, When famine or plague comes upon the land, or blight or mildew or locusts or grasshoppers, or when the enemy besieges them in their city, whatever plague or sickness may come, may whatever prayer or petition your people Israel make, or us, each knowing his own afflictions and spreading out his hands towards this temple, be heard by you from heaven, your dwelling place, Lord. You may, may you forgive and act and repay each man according to all his ways since you know his heart. So that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land. This was Solomon when he was dedicating the temple. So in other words, when there's something coming towards us, turn your, your face towards God and continue to pray and know that he's going to deliver you. Second Chronicles 29 says, If disaster comes upon us, whether sword or judgment, plague or famine, we will stand before this temple and before you, for your name is in this temple. We will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and deliver us. So again, if you are feeling afraid because of what is going on right now, cry out to the Lord. It says right here that God hears us, and he will deliver us. He will deliver us. I want to give us um, a few examples from the Old Testament because the Bible talks about Israel and his people. We are his people too, okay? That is us. So sometimes if you hear Israel... We're still part of Israel, okay? Amen. 
Amen. So I'm going to just give us a few things. I didn't write down the exact scripture. We've been but adopted. It, we've been adopted into the family. We've been grafted in. I'm a part of that beautiful tree. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so in Exodus 8, the plague of gnats and flies says that they went all throughout Egypt. It did not touch God's people. Did not touch God's people. Exodus 9, the plague of the livestock. Um, and verse 4 says, But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and that of Egypt, so that no animal belonging to the Israelites will die. So do you think that he would not do the same to your possessions right now? Isn't he greater? You know, I think greater yeah. now yeah. than back yeah. then. Amen. It God was so great either way. Let me not say it like that. God is so great. If he did it then, he'll do it now. So let me rephrase that. Uh, the plague of the boils and the locusts, Scripture says that it happened all over Egypt. Remember that his people were in Goshen. So they went that far away. Okay, if he did it for them back then, he's going to do that for us now. Scripture says the only place that it did not hail was the land of Goshen where the Israelites were. So when the plague of hail came, it didn't touch God's people. It did not touch his people. The plague of darkness. Scripture says no one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all of the Israelites had light in places where they lived. The plague of the firstborn. Scripture says among the Israelites not a dog will bark at any person or animal. And then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. If he did it back then, he'll do it again. So no matter what is going on in the world, we need to rest in confidence that he will still continue to make a distinction. We just have to stand on it. Are, are we going to be the people that's going to say, well, it's just a matter of time before things bad start happening to us. Is it just a matter of time before the coronavirus? Heck no. I don't care. I'm not catching it. I'm not looking for it. It's not coming near me. It's not coming to my family. It's not coming to my house. I need to you know, make what I believe sure. I need to declare it and say it. People, have you heard that there are some people that say, I catch everything that goes around. I am always so sick. Oh, I'm going to get, the Bible says you're your own prophet. I'm not catching, you know, that. I'm not catching anything that's going around. And you've got to declare that too. Okay, God will make a distinction. In Exodus 12, 13, the Bible says that the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. So if the plague didn't bother his people then, it should not bother us now. But we have got to make that decision to stand on it. Because, you know, maybe before you became a Christian, you were raised up, like what I said with people, that they get a sniffle, they're trying to catch a cold. You know, the belly go the wrong way, oh, I'm trying to catch a stomach flu, which I'm not. These are just words, okay? I'm not declaring those things. So we have to learn to change our vocabulary, change the way that we think. We don't, just because something is out there does not mean it has to come near us or that we have to receive it. No. Again, I'm telling you, you know, it's not that we um, be ignorant. There are some things you have to do. You got to wash your hands. You don't have to cover your face, you know, if you sneeze or something. But we don't have to walk around in fear. We don't need to make a rush to the store to buy Lysol, Lysol webs, face masks. No, I'm not going to do that. I mean, if, if that's what your faith is, do it. I'm not going to condemn you, but I'm telling you that we either believe what Psalm 91 says or we don't believe what Psalm 91 says. If God says, without faith, it's impossible to please me, and we walk in that faith to believe that he's going to protect us, to bring that distinction, do you think that God is, God is just going to dishonor it? If he tells us, without faith, it's impossible to please me, and he's just going to like, what, psh, kick you to the side because you're trusting him? No way. No way. God's not going to do that. So let's make a distinction that we are the believers and we're going to believe what he says. Okay? Psalm 91 is Jesus' blood. Okay? Exodus is said that put the blood over the house. And I'm, I'll make a distinction. But the blood is still relevant today. It's just not of animals like in Exodus. Now it's the blood of Jesus. We can pray over our house, lay hands on the house, anoint the house. And kick whatever wants to attempt to come in out in the name of Jesus. The blood is still relevant and the blood is greater today. That's for sure because Jesus is not just an animal from Exodus. Jesus is everything. The atonement for everything. 
So the blood will still prevent sickness from it. But again, like Psalm 91 says, we have to say of the Lord. We have to declare it. Mark eleven twenty three says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So if you get a sniffle because of, of a cold or, or you start to feel a stomach ache or whatever, what do you say? I'm not having it. I'm not taking it. Jesus said no, and no weapon formed against me will prosper. You start to say no way. But I also do believe that we have to speak, you know, health over our bodies, which I'm going to get into in just a few minutes. Speak health before it comes. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. So do you think that the things that are going on in the world that are, are plagues and pestilence, is that God's fullest? No. no, it's not. That's, so do we receive it? No. No. So before it even hits Miami, we start to say, you're not coming on my property. You're not coming to my address. You're not coming to my kid's school. You're not coming to my car. You're not coming to whatever. Make the distinction because the blood is over it if you put it there. The blood of Jesus protects me. The blood of Jesus protects my things. Amen. Amen. Um, Third John 1. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So why do I bring that scripture? Well, if you're in the word, you're growing, right? You're growing spiritually here. I pray that you enjoy good health and all may go well with you, even as your soul is prospering. So if you're in the word, you're prospering in God, you're growing in the Lord. By this scripture, we can expect for our health to do what? To prosper, Amen. right? Amen. So why don't you start to declare that? If you're in the word, you're reading the word, you're growing over here, I expect my health to prosper as well. That's what the word says. Start to declare that. In Daniel 3.25, Scripture says, look, he exclaimed, I see four men unbound and unharmed walking around the fire, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. So Jesus was there when they were in the fire. Okay, they had the faith. They said, well, whatever, throw us in there, but I'm believing God. So if God rescued them from fire because they believed, don't you think that he can still do that today? Mm -hmm. Whatever the problem is that you're facing, whether it is sickness you know, plagues, hail, uh, hurricane, whatever, whatever you put there, he will still do it. He can still do it. Amen. Amen. But my question, I want to throw you, what happens if you do get sick, right? Because it all sounds good until you go, <laughs> right? In the middle of the night, <laughs> you're like, what? what is that? Right? What happens? Okay. I just told you the first thing you start to say is, I'm not having it this way. I don't receive it. Okay. You get off of me, whatever it is. You get off of me because you're trespassing. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So whatever it is, you're trespassing. Even let's say if it's a chronic pain or a chronic sickness or something, we still have to declare that. Okay? So my question is to you, what happens if you get sick? But my question, the second question is, do you believe that it's God's will to heal you? Yes. Because right. some people don't. So if you get the sniffle, it doesn't matter. Okay, first we stand, you're not coming near this tent, you're not coming near my home. First we stand on God's word, put the blood all around everything that you own. You're not coming here, devil. With whatever shenanigans he wants to bring, not having it. But what happens if you wake up one day and you're dealing with a situation? You don't receive it, you say no way, devil, you use the word to fight it. Okay, but then you have to also know that it's God's will to heal you. Because some people don't believe that it's God's will. Some people think, well, I woke up not feeling good this morning, so that's what some people believe. Some people have gone through terrible circumstances, and people have passed away, and they're traumatized, and they're angry, and they say, well, God doesn't heal anymore because he didn't heal so-and-so that they were believing God for. I don't have answers for that. All I can tell you is what the Word says. You know, the Word says it is God's will to heal. And until the day that I go to heaven, I'm going to fully believe that because he's healed me. He's healed people that I know. I had a relative one time that was gray in the hospital. She was gray. And we went and we prayed over her, called her out in the name of Jesus. And the next day, she came out of the coma. And she lived for years later. 
I have seen God do great things. He's healed my body. He's healed people that I know. Pastor's not even supposed to have a leg. So I will always believe, I don't care what happens, that God is the healer. Amen. So we have to know, know, like not know, but know that God is the healer. I know that God is the healer. So we have to know um, that Jesus is the healer. In the book of Luke, in the book of Luke 6, 17 to 19, the Bible says, when they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area, surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and Jerusalem, and from as far north as the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those troubled by evil spirits were healed. Everyone tried to touch him because healing power went out from him, and he healed everyone. Amen. And he still does it today. He still does it today. Okay? If you've never experienced a healing and you need a healing, you can you can start right now to say, "You know what, Lord? I believe what the word says and just heal me." The Bible gives all kinds of examples of some people received immediate healing. Some people got healing as they went along the way. You know, some people were healed by a doctor. So it doesn't matter how God decides to heal you. You just continue to believe that God is going to heal you, and he will. There was um, a gentleman here in the church that, you know, a lot of us, some of us call him dad. And at one point, many, many years ago in his life, he had a lymphoma. I think it was lymphoma cancer. And the doctors sent him home. They started to do the tattoos, to do the, the laser for the chemo or radiation, whatever it was. They started the tattoos and everything, and then they just came to him and said, you know what, we're not gonna do it. Um, you can die. Go home, get your affairs in order. But he lived like 30 something years later. <laughs> yeah, God healed him. That day when the doctors told him, go home, get your affairs in order, he stopped by a church that he had never gone to. He went in, he got prayer, a man told him, you're not going to die from this. And he lived until just two years ago when the Lord took him home. He lived 30-something years after that. After a cancer that they said, you know, even rich people with all the money in the world cannot recover from that type of cancer that he had exactly. So God is the healer. God is, he's the healer. Amen. I just repeat it because I believe it. So he healed everyone. In the King James Version of Luke 6, 19, the NIV said he healed everyone, but the KJV says he healed them all. So I want your faith today to be, to be um, increased that he can still heal you. But yet not only can he heal you, will he heal you, yes, but he also protects us. So we don't have to wait until uh, someone gets a sniffle or someone has a bad doctor report, you know, to say, oh God, bring healing. No. We start to say, Lord, I'm growing in you. My health is going to prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Lord, you took the stripes, Lord Jesus, that I may be healed. I'm healthy and healed right now. You start to declare those things right now. You make your boundaries. You say, cancer, you're not coming here. You know, sickness, leukemia, pneumonia, whatever, you're not coming here. I'm, I'm covered. I'm prospering in my health in the name of Jesus. You start to declare now. Don't wait until later. In Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 5, it says, It is our weakness that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. And he was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. That's um, Isaiah 53, 4 to 5. So he already took it. He already took it. So no one has to wait until they're not feeling so good or, or anything like that to say, God, you know, heal me. No, I'm already healed. I'm already healthy, Lord. And start to declare that over your body. If you get a sniffle, you're already healed. And if you're healthy right now, you're still healed. But you have to declare it. Remember Psalm 91 says that I will say, I will say. Romans 10, 9 to 10 says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So if you use your mouth to profess your faith for salvation, 
You still need to use your mouth to profess your faith for your healing, for your, your health right now, your good health right now, okay? 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we, excuse me, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Meaning he did it all the way back there. So when he took the stripes, when he died on the cross, for, for our healing, he was already thinking of you back then. So he did it then. He established healing then. That means right now, if you're dealing with an issue, you are already healed. So start to talk to your body and say, you're healed. You know, like, <laughs> like my toe, I've been saying, toe, you're okay. You're healed, you're healthy, whatever part of your body. But then again, like I said, we have to wash our hands, right? We can't be, you know, you know, silly and think you don't wash your hands or, or do what's necessary. You know, we also have to take care of our bodies. We can't abuse our bodies and think, you know, eating all the ice cream or, or the chocolate chip cookies or, you know, things like that and think that also, let's go the opposite way. What about people who just don't eat because they're on the go and, and working all the time and moving? You know, there's opposite ends of the spectrum. Some people eat the wrong thing, some people eat too much, some people don't eat at all. So both need to, to come to the right thing and, and eat healthy. We have to take care of our bodies. You know what I'm saying? I can't feed my body something terrible and think I'm gonna have energy to do anything throughout the day. Yeah. You know, anybody familiar with a sugar crash? You feel great for 20 minutes and then you wanna sleep the rest of the day. So I can't lay in bed saying, God, give me energy. You, you know what I'm saying? We can't. We have to use some, some wisdom, some common sense and knowledge to say, you know, I need to make this change, this change, and this change. And you know, if you just came to the Lord or or maybe you're a Christian for a couple of years and you have used your body in the past, maybe smoking or drinking or whatever, and you stopped and you're a believer, start to ask God to heal your body. You know, I did, I started to say, Lord, heal my lungs, heal my lungs, God, from the smoking and, and everything. Like my body is, is okay from, from things I did in my past and God is no respecter of person. He will help you to heal your body as well from anything in the past that maybe we did out of ignorance, you know, we did out of sin. So we were already healed. We were already healed. So instead of saying, you know, I'll be the first to say sometimes something will act up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. But I'll be like, Lord, you're healing me right now. I'm being healed right now in Jesus' name. So remember, your words, they are important. Okay? It is God's will to heal you of pain, broken bones, gross cancers, uh, hearing, eyesight, Anything internal, anything external, it is God's will. And that includes deliverance, you know, from, from evil spirits and things like that. It is God's will. I have a few more scriptures for us. Matthew 8 says, when um, Jesus came down from the hill, the cross, they followed him. A man with a skin disease came to Jesus. The man bowed down before him and was healed from his disease. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this, but go and show yourself to the priest. Offer the gift Moses commanded, commanded for people who are made well, and this will show the people what I have done. So Jesus was establishing right there his healing ministry, and that it is his will to heal. He established it right there. That's his will. So even if you know you have been struggling with something for a long time, or you know something left and came back, don't receive it back. You continue to say, "I am healed." And you know if you have a doctor's report, you look at that report, you say, "You are not greater than God." The Bible says that every that Jesus is the name above every name, right? So I always say Jesus is the name that is above any doctor report that he will give you. Any doctor report. Whether God will heal you by using a doctor, Luke was a doctor, or whether God will tell you, you know, go and drink this or use this or that, or God will do it miraculously. You can be healed if you believe. But please, I just, you know, uh, come before you today to say believe God believe God that you don't even have to get sick you don't have to receive anything bad whether it's you know the plague that's going on right now or or cancers or anything believe God that you don't have to have it speak it over yourself speak health and if you get a sniffle kick it out in the name of Jesus and remember that God makes a distinction between his people and the world all you have to do is believe it and if you've been one of those people that 
unfortunately you've gone through a, a hard time and you've lost someone and you were believing for God to heal them. You know, I don't have an answer for you, but what I can tell you, just by losing someone um, a year and a half ago, two people actually on the same day that we will believe in God for healing for, I can tell you that they have their healing now because they're in heaven and they are praising the Lord. They are walking, jumping, and doing things that they couldn't do here. Do I have the answer why they didn't get it here? No, but you know what the Bible says? That God will heal them and they got their healing because they're in heaven right now. Amen. So don't be discouraged and and you know don't be mad with the Lord because I can't give you an answer. No one really can give you an answer. Just know that God is there. It's his will to heal. So don't receive the craziness that's going out there. Uh, if you have anyone that is sick in your family, continue to believe God for them. Speak health over them. Um, there's a, a YouTube video that I listened to a lot and I was going through an issue a couple months ago and I listened to it at least twice a day and I said it, the scriptures, over my own self every single day, twice a day, and I slept with it. It's um, Kenneth Copeland is reading them out and they are scriptures that Keith Moore pulled. There are, if you look it up on YouTube, it's 101, 101 healing scriptures. So pull it up and the reason that I pulled it up was that I could be hearing, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, hearing the scripture, saying the scripture, until I could just say, you know, I will not die, I will live to a ripe old age like Abraham. And you go through all of these scriptures, but it's not again, again, it's not by rote. It's not just by saying, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed, by his stripes I'm healed. No, it's knowing by, him, by his stripes I am healed. And it's by knowing that it's his will to heal you. So meditate on the scriptures because one day as you hear it, the Holy Spirit inside of you is going to connect and then you will believe it. Okay, but you have to open yourself up to believe it. Pray the scriptures over other people. Amen. You know, Amen. your friends or family, you know. Here we have a, a, a mirror that we write people's names on and we declare health and healing over them. You know, we pray it in this church for every single person that walks in, like what, what um, uh, Pastor Raquel says. It's like a sticker that we keep saying, you know, no one in this church is going to have tumors. No one in this church is going to have this or this or this. You declare that. I'm already praying for all of my, you know, great grandkids. I don't even have grandkids yet. But pray for them. I, I pray these scriptures. In my prayer time, I say, Lord, for those behind me, meaning my older relatives, those to my left and my right, Lord, which are my brothers, uh, cousins, like that, and those below me, um, you know, my children and, and so forth, and those that haven't come. So declare it. Start praying for, for those right now. Start declaring health over your healthy family members right now. Amen. Believe the Lord for it, okay? He's faithful. He's trustworthy. And even if you've been let down, it doesn't matter. Because if you are trusting God, then the outcome is up to God. You just believe Him, okay? Like I said, I had two family members pass away that we were believing to be raised to complete health. We have to do our part. The greatest part is what the scripture says that without faith it is impossible to please him so please him just by believing him he took everything everything on the cross for salvation and for healing so if you're praying salvation for your family and you're believing that continue to pray healing pray healing over yourself and like I said wash your hands from germs you know give our body the nutrition that it needs the sleep that it needs um, don't be stressed. You know, there are things that we know, earthly things on how to take care of our body. But you know what? The greatest thing is, is to believe God for the supernatural, the spiritual realm. Okay? So that's my, my message for tonight. Don't be discouraged by the things going on in the world. Don't freak out. Okay? We're not a part of the world. I just gave you scripture that says God makes distinction between his people and the world. So if you're a believer, if you've had uh, said, the, said Jesus Christ come into my life and you're living for him, you are his child and he will make that distinction. And if you wake up, and I, like I said with a sniffle, rebuke that junk in Jesus' name and kick it out the door, okay? Amen. So in Jesus' name, be blessed. We're going to see you here on Sunday. Okay, I speak healing over everybody that's watching the video. In the name of Jesus, may you be healed by your stripes and everything rebuked from you. And everyone in here, the same thing. Be healed, be healthy, be prosperous as you grow in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Stacy. That was a right now word. Praise God. God.
God brought that word here today Amen. for Amen. a reason. And that reason is that we're going to pray for the sick. Amen. Tonight. Yes. Because I believe God has a supernatural healing tonight. And the Bible says that the elders, I, I guess I'm an elder now, <laughs> <laughs> anoint the people with oil and believe, and they will be healed. Amen. And yes. that's what I believe. I believe God, you brought that word for a reason. And yes. where, if there's people here Amen. that need healing. And I'm going to pray for them tonight. And God is going to heal them. I agree. There's nobody going to be in this in this church that's sick anymore. Amen. From today forward, everyone is going to be healed. Amen. And there's a purpose why this message was given today. God used you. Praise and you. now you, I'm going to pray Thank for the Lord. sick. And God is going to heal the sick in Jesus' name. Don't be scared. Amen. Because if you want to be healed, Woo. come over here because I'm going to pray for you. Come on, he's going to give some new lungs, new kidneys, everything. Everybody. Amen. There's going to be complete healing. There's no shame here in this I house. I believe it. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today, you guys are going to be healed. I agree. Ma'am, you're going to be healed. God is going to heal your body. Your lungs are going to be brand new. He's going to make you a brand new person. I believe that he could fix your lungs. He could fix every hurt in your body today in, in Jesus' name. Jesus. That's the God that I believe in. Yes. And Chiki, he's going to heal you. In the name of Jesus. And you need to believe it. Yes. That's what you need to do. I'm not going to take it anymore. Like Amen. what Stacy was saying, I ain't taking this yes. anymore. I'm taking my healing home with you. You're taking a healing home with you. You're taking a healing home with you today. Greg, you're taking a healing yes. home today. In the name of Jesus. You need to say no more. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this young lady, woman, Father God. I pray right now, Father God, new lungs in her body, Father God. New everything, Father God, that she's going through right now. It is finished, Lord. It is finished, Father God. Right now, your anointing fall on her, Father God. Your healing power, Father God. Any, any, anything, Father God, that's coming against her, Father God, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out in Jesus' name, Father God. Brand new, brand new lungs, Father God. Brand new mind, Father God. Everything, Father God, everything that is hurting in our body, Father God, right now is made whole in Jesus' name, Father. You did not die on the cross for nothing, Father God. You said you died for our healing, Father God. And you're going to heal her today, Father God. And I believe it, and I'm going to put my faith, and I'm going to stab it. She is whole in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come over here, my brother. Oh, Lord God, you know I love this man like nothing else, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for his life, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. I pray, Father God, that his faith will grow in you, Father God, in a way that he never imagined. Father God, I bind all high blood pressure in his life, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I cancel the spirit of high blood pressure. I cancel the spirit of diabetes and high sugar, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. His body needs a line to your word, Father God, a line to your truth right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I cancel everything out of his body, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God, I pray wholeness right now over his life, Father God. You will give him many years, Father God. Many, many years, Father God. I need him in my life, Father God. So you need to give him plenty years of life, Father God. And and not just many years, but years of wholeness, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Right now, his heart, Father God, is being healed right now. Oh, you're touching him right now, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It is done, Lord. It is finished, Lord. No more, Lord. No more. No more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this young man right here, Lord. Oh, thank you for my pops, Lord God. Father God, I pray a sound mind, Father God, over him, Father God. 
Oh, anything that wants to come and destroy him, Father God, and bring confusion in his life, Father God, I cancel it right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray a sound mind over his body, Father God. No sickness, Father God, no weapon formed against him, Father God, will prosper, Father God. I plead your blood over his life, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. I thank you for his life, Lord, and I thank you for his healing, Father God. Oh, you're making them new, Father God. Oh, I feel a dance inside of him, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I feel a dance in his life, Father God, and a, a, a pit in his step. Hey, I don't know if, you, if that's correct, Lord, but that's what I see, Father God, him dancing and jumping around, Father God. And I just thank you for his life, Father God. Thank you for his healing, Father God. Today, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Where does it hurt, bro? Where, where? Just show me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, all this stuff is going to get done with, Father God. Today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I cancel it all, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I cancel everything, Father God. Every 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 word that has been spoken over his body, Jesus, Father God, Lord. it is canceled today in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God. I'd say, Father God, right now, Father God, his body aligns to your word, Father God. By your stripes, Father God, he is healed, Father God. He will not die at a young age, That's Father right, God. Lord. He is another one that I need in my life, Father God. Lord. And you will keep him, Father God, whole, Father God. Oh, Ramashaya. Oh, whatever is, is, is his ailment right now, I, I feel it shrinking, Father God. I feel it shrinking, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Put everything back into place, Father God. Oh, oh I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to make you 15 again. Oh, hallelujah. 15 years old. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Brand new, brand new, brand new, brand new. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, bro. Hallelujah. You want some prayer? Yeah, what do you want me to pray? Um, it's more of an emotional prayer. Okay, okay. All right, that's fine. Close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I, I really don't know what she's going through, Father God, in her life right now, Father. But right now, Father God, I just pray your love over her life, Father God. Your love to fall over her life like never before, Lord God, that you would just Fill her up, Father God, completely, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you just give her, Father God, everything that she needs, Father God, all emotions, Father God, anything, Father God, any any hurt, any pain that has been on her life, Father God, from from her family, her parents, Father God, any, any, any kind of, of, of verbal abuse on her life, Father God, I cancel it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray a new heart in her, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, Father God, that, that you, Father God, will place a new heart inside of her, Father God. That her emotions, Father God, she will just put them in your hands and ask you, Father God, I pray on um, Proverbs 3 over her life, Father God, that she may trust in the Lord and not lean on her own understanding, but in all her ways acknowledge you, Father God, and you will make her path straight. Oh, I believe that in her life, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me ask you a question, sir. What's your name? Sir. Sir, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your life? Yeah. How does that? How do you feel now? You feel better? You feel better? I want you to raise your hands in here. Give me five. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this young lady. Bless her, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the victory in her life, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a beautiful woman, Father God. You're going to make this wonderful girl, Father God. A woman of God, Lord. A woman of fire, Lord. A woman filled with your Holy Spirit, Father God. I tell you right now, Father, that you fill her with your Holy Spirit, Father God. That she may feel your fire in your, her life, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Amen. 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 Where's your little sister? She's half asleep back there. I want to pray for her. Venga. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 
não disse que é esta. Turn around, turn around, turn around. Mira, young lady, you look like my daughter when she was little. You know that? Wear her little glasses, right? Little <laughs> Rachel. And Rachel is beautiful now. And I want to pray for you because I want God to heal your eyeballs so you can see good. And God is going to do a mighty work because you're going to be a beautiful girl when you grow up. Okay? You let me pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for this little young lady, Lord. I ask you, Father God, that you bring complete healing in her eyes, Father God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that she will never have to even wear those glasses again, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God. And any emotional thing that she's going through, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, she is going to be a woman of God, a woman of fire, a prophet for your kingdom, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, you will guide her, Father God. You will guide these two young ladies, Father God, in a way, Father God, that they will never imagine, Father God, because it's going to be your hand upon their lives, Father God. They will be witnesses, Father God, of your goodness, of your love, and your faithfulness, Father Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What a beautiful girl. Hallelujah. You want to pray too? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God, for this young lady, Lord God. It's <laughs> everything, right? Hallelujah. This one wants everything, Lord. She wants a complete blessing over her life, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray a complete blessing over her, Father God, from the top of her head to the toes, the bottom of her feet, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you, Lord, emotional, everything, Father God. Give her strength, Father God, on the journey she's on, Father God. Give her wisdom, Father God. I bind anything that wants to come against her, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray a sound mind over her, Father God. I pray that you give her wisdom from up above, Father God, spiritual wisdom, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you may that she may see through your eyes, Father God, that she may be a witness, Father God, a voice, Father God, that she may be the John the Baptist, Father God, in her school, Father God, that voice, Father God, that, that call out in the desert, Father God. Father, that's her, Father God. I pray that spirit of John the Baptist over her, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Complete healing for her emotion, her mind, Father God, everything else, Father God. Oh, I, I, I see her marching down the street, Father God. Let her march. She's a soldier, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for this soldier, Lord. I bless this soldier, Lord. Fill her up with your spirit, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. I pray that you give her tongues of fire, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I love you, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my brother, Jesus. Ooh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What do you need? What do you need? Um, to see if you could uh, set a prayer for my sister. All right. You know, uh, every time I talk to her, she does my spirit. Though. Amen. Amen. She's fighting for cancer. Okay. But... I trust in God and believe in Him that she has a